morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Look who we've got. I've got Becky and Vicki with us today. Yay. It's going to be awesome. But before we get into the meat of it, let's start <laughs> with centering prayer. Please take a breath with us and turn within. God, we rejoice in knowing you, in sharing you, and having you. God, we are so thankful for this time together. Please be in our thoughts, in our words, and in our hearts as we rejoice in these teachings today. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So I am so excited to share a book. I don't think either one of you have read this. I'm going to hold it up. It's Conscious Living, and it's written by Guy Hendricks. And the whole book is kind of written off of this first chapter. So I'm going to read a little bit off of this first chapter. He has two questions, and, and here they are. <clears throat> So Conscious Living Chapter 1, to make the most of our gift of life, you and I must answer two great questions in our short time on earth. One question is, how do I live at peace with myself? Okay, powerful question. The second one is, how do I live in harmony with the people around me? To answer these questions, we must find out who we are at our core. We must find out how to recognize the core selves of others. We must learn how to learn about the most difficult thing of all, the ever-shifting needs and feelings of ourselves and people all around us. So that's the premise for this whole book. He goes into um, he goes into how the differences in our core values shape our perceptions of the world around us. And one of the things that came up for me, and this is from my counseling days, but for me, it really highlights what he's talking about is words can have such incredibly different meanings from one person to another. When I was working as a drug and alcohol counselor, for example, I would say, wow, that was a really big step. You should be very proud of yourself. But pride is also a sin. And some people feel like to be proud is to go against God. It's to put themselves separate from other people. It's to be vain. It's to be horrible. When my intention was to really honor that person on their journey and the steps that they had taken. So I say be proud. And for some people, that's like a slap in the face. Why would I do that? You know, I'm not prideful. That's, that's a sin. So Knowing the very core of a person can really help you to meet the Christ within, right? The Christ within me sees the Christ within you. And so often you kind of have to look and see what the, what the core issue is. I'll say one more thing and then I'll, I'll can't wait to hear what you have to say. So often, especially if I've got a conflict coming up, if I need to set a boundary or say, no, I'm not okay with this, I start doing all these weird mind games, and I'm sure I'm the only one, right? They'll think I'm pushy, or they'll think, you know, this, or they'll think I'm some kind of a monster. And when I start doing that, I've learned to recognize, I think that about me. Um, I think that if I feel this way, if I set this boundary, I must be some kind of a monster. When at my core, I am not a monster. So when those thoughts come up and I'm worried somebody else might think that way about me, it's really an opportunity for me to open that door and see where it is that I feel like by wanting this, I'm out of integrity, that I'm I'm pushing an agenda or belittling the people around me. 
so often I think, oh, this person will think that. But the reality is that thought started right here. And why did this person come up with that? And it really helps me to see my course. So I hope I didn't muddle that up and that I made it clearer instead, because that was my intention. And did that bring up anything for you, ladies? What do you think, gals? Well, I I related very much to what you were talking about at the end, because a lot of times when I'm doing things, I'm thinking, will this person still like me if I do this? Will this person think I'm stupid if I do this? And it's like all this self-doubt comes up and it's dragged up, I'm sure, from my childhood and past experiences. And if I would step back and think about the fact that I'm the one placing that, those feelings on this, that I'm the one causing my own fear of rejection or whatever, if I could stop and think about that, but it's, that's kind of hard to do when you're not used to doing it, when you're just used to reacting to it. What do you think, Becky? I love that. I, I, I love it, love it, love it. And you're right, Linda, I have not read that book of his, but he has several books. And I have read a couple of the others, especially the ones he writes with his wife. And it's about conscious coupling, being being aware in a relationship, which is like what you said, even deeper, because this is the person, your spouse or your partner is the person that you, you really set out to know the deepest, because that's why you brought them into this particular space in your life. And um, he is very much about, you know, this is this your stuff in 99% of the time, like you, Linda, it's my stuff. Um, when I and somebody says something to me, or I get an email or a text that, sa that sounds like someone is uh, telling me to do something or telling me that I what I did was incorrect, my first thought is to run to the, well, who are you and why are you being so such and such? And that it isn't them, because when I take another breath or two into those feelings and that understanding, I realize it is me reacting to it or me thinking that that's where it's come. And it's made up in my wee little brain, you know. And one of the things that has come up lately a lot for me is that um, I really try. I'm, I'm, a, I'm like you, Linda and, and Vicki. I'm a good person at heart. I think we all are. Um, I think that's part of our, that our, of our being. Sometimes I react and I don't like the way I react. And I'm wondering what the heck is this coming, coming from, you know, where, where am I in my mind that this is bothering me? So I know that it's something stirred up in me. So what I've decided that I've started doing is anytime I feel a hot button pushed is to stop and take a breath and think to myself, something along the lines of, okay, this is an opportunity to learn. Either I'm going to learn about myself or them or both, but I'm going to learn something right now. And it has really, I've been doing this for about three weeks and has really changed the way I feel about things. Cause it's just like, I'm giving an opportunity to learn. Like Hendrick says, either is something going on with me or my interaction with them? What is it that I need to learn? And it just makes me feel calmer about it. It makes me feel like if, if all of this is a lesson, then if I get the lesson, maybe I don't have to keep repeating it, <laughs> you know? So anyway, that's kind of where, what came up for me. Does anybody else have anything else they want to add before I pray us out? I do. <clears throat> you brought up something that uh, I picked up in Al Cajon in a book study from one of, uh, one of our wonderful congregants, I really relate to your saying sometimes I'm, I react to a situation and I'm not happy with my reaction. This woman suggested, and we try and use it here, not as well as we could, we're practicing a do-over. <laughs> so when I say the wrong thing and I know it, I can turn around and say, I need a do-over. Or if somebody says something to me, that was really arrogant and 
and out of line, I can say, you need to do over, right? To the kids or the grandkids, or maybe we need to do over. And, and I know that isn't exactly what we're talking about here, but it has been such a wonderful gift to have that tool. When you started talking, I thought, oh, we need to talk about do overs before we're done. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. I Isn't really, that brilliant? I think it really is. <laughs> and it's not, you shouldn't have said that, you know, it's like, oh, let's have a do-over, you know, I need a do-over. And, and it changes, it just, it works. And I am so grateful to you who brought that to me. I'm not going to say your name, but I hope you're watching. Um, that, that that's now a part of my consciousness and my life that I'm able to say, let's have a do-over so thank you for letting me you know share again because <laughs> that reminds me of like you know that idea of the inner child that comes in you know and the inner child is frightened by something you said it would be a good thing for the adult to then say could you do could you say that again or could, could you say that in a different way could you do a do-over on that so that the inner child isn't going eh, you know <laughs> that's wonderful ladies thank you so much I really enjoyed the, the sharing here. So I will go ahead and offer us an ending prayer. As we take our breath together, we say, Father, Mother, God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for these wonderful insights and for understandings and the, and the do-overs in our lives that we can take a breath and say, we want to do it over. And that's okay because we're human and we are working. We are a work in progress for sure. So we thank you for being here with us. We thank you for each and every person watching. We hope that what they needed to hear, they heard the message straight from you to them through us as the Christ in us. And we are grateful for this opportunity. So thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Amen. I want to thank you too. This has been a fun one. I appreciate it. Um, and I know that you guys go out of your way to do this. And I'm so grateful. And, I'm, and I know that the listeners are grateful too, because they tell me, and that's wonderful. I love hearing from you guys. So leave a comment, leave us a message, uh, like, subscribe, join us, ask, you know, tell us what you want us to talk about, everything, all of the above, because we love hearing from you. We love knowing that you're listening and that we're sparking conversations for you and others and for oh we're just so happy for that so join us again tomorrow in person or or uh, uh we have offerings online on other days as well so thank you so much for being here have a blessed day namaste thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit we are on facebook search for unity church of el cajon and follow us and like our posts you can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.